Hi, Nolan. Thanks for sending your question. Um, to get this into standard form so that we can tell what the answer is to this question, we're going to have to complete the square. So step number one to completing the square is we have to group like letters and put our numbers on the other side. So letters like to be with their own kind and then the numbers like to hang out on the right hand side. So we're even going to give them their own little groups here. This is going to be for my X's. I'm going to separate them by a plus. This is going to be for my Y's and this is going to be for my numbers over here. So 4X squared minus 16x and then I'll have plus negative 5y squared minus 30y adding 9 to both sides I get a positive 9 on the right hand side step number one is done step number two is doing what I call make room for plus something so we have an x squared and a y squared term here we have to turn those both into perfect squares. So to do that, we need to make room for plus something in both of these little groups here. So keeping them in their groups, we're going to have 4x squared minus 16x plus something plus negative 5y squared minus 30y plus something since I've added two plus somethings to the left hand side, the rules of algebra tell me I also have to do it to the right hand side. So two plus somethings on the left, two plus somethings on the right. We are done with step number two. Step number three, um, we have to factor out the numbers on x squared and y squared. I don't want any numbers in front of these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the four out of this little group. And so factoring out the 4 of the group so that the 4 disappears on x squared. Um, I'm also factoring a 4 out of this guy. So this will turn into a negative 4x. This is still plus something. Um, this guy has a negative 5 in front of him. So I'm actually factoring out a negative 5. And this will turn into y squared. Factoring out a negative 5 from 30 gives me positive 6 and then I saw a plus something over here and this is still just my two plus somethings and my nine hanging out on the right hand side okay so we are done with step 3 now we're going to fill in our plus somethings, and we have to do it to both sides. Um, our plus somethings that we're going to fill in is b over 2 squared. That's what our plus something is equal to. In other words, if we have a quadratic equation of the type ax squared plus bx plus c, such as this one right here, we're going to take off the number in front of... Um, the x term or y term appropriately, divide it by 2, and square it. And that is not supposed to have a negative in front of it. I apologize. It's just b over 2 squared. Sorry about that. So we're picking off the number in front of x, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. So I have negative 4 divided by 2 squared is my plus something for this guy. That's equal to negative 2 squared, which is equal to 4. So we're going to be inputting 4 as our plus something here. Our plus something over here is going to be, we're going to pick off the term in front of y, 6 divided by 2 squared is equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9. So I'm going to input a 9 over here. I also have to fill in my right-hand side. Whatever I do to the left-hand side, I also have to do to the right. You might think, oh, let's just add a 4 and a 9 to the right-hand side. Except, if you look at this equation closely, I really have a 4 in front of here. If I redistributed the 4, I'm really adding 16 to the left-hand si left side. I'm also going to add 16 to the right-hand side. 
Um, it looks like I'm adding 9 to the left-hand side, but if I distributed this 5, you'd see that I'm really subtracting negative 45 from the left-hand side. So I'm also going to do that to the right-hand side. So it looks like we got everything filled in. Step number four is completed. Step number five, we're going to simplify and we're going to put it in standard form. Let's go ahead and simplify the left-hand side when I do that. Um, I now have perfect squares right here. So this x squared minus 4x plus 4 is really x minus 2 squared. If you're not sure what this number should be, it came from here. It's really b over 2. So if you get lost, um, just put this number in right here. So this is going to be minus 5. This is y plus 3 squared. Again, I got this from this b over 2 term. b over 2 is 3. Uh, 9 plus 16 minus 45 is, whoops, negative 20. So that is simplified. Now we have to put it in standard form. Um, standard form for conic, conic sections means that we have a 1 on the right-hand side at all times. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 20. And it looks like I get um, 4 divided by negative 20 will give me a negative 5 on the bottom. So I will have x minus 2 squared over negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 20 is positive 4. So I will have y plus 3 squared over 4. And I will have a 1 on the right-hand side. So what this really turns into is y plus 3 squared over 4 minus x minus 2 squared over 5 is equal to 1. And I believe that is b. So the correct answer to this would be b. Thanks again for your question, Nolan, and I look forward to answering more of your questions using SnapMath in the future.